Well, good morning. Um, this video um, is going to be in English because um, as opposed to all the other texts that we work with um, uh, in, in class, this one comes from Journalistic Writing by Robert Knight. And uh, so I will be uh, going over the um, topics that we need to deal with today uh, in English. However, it's important for you to know that uh, regardless, and because you are translators, you can very well refer to any of our books, either in English or in Spanish, uh, as long as you're consistent and uh, the contents that, that you provide are uh, specific and, and right. So, um, today's uh, class is going to be kind of short, um, and uh, by this time, you know, I'm, I'm, it's the nth day of lockdown, so eh, what can I say? I'm already um, so used to being here on my own and, uh, and just recording these videos that it makes me feel closer to you, or not, whatever. So... Today, we're going to be talking um, about Knight's text, and we have pages 289 through 300. Those are the first pages that I'm going to be making reference to, because unless you are in the uh, teacher training track, there is a subject, a key subject, very uh, important subject, that... Um, is history of the English language. Uh, translators usually do not take that uh, subject, but it is a key topic uh, for us in uh, our uh, exp expression in English. So, uh, if you go to page two, uh, 289 from Journalistic Writing, you will see learning the history of English, the point. Why? Because you very well know that uh, when in 1066, Guillaume d'Orange, uh, William of Orange, or, or um, I, I think is the, the name of the English name of the, of the king, um, conquered England. And so for 400 years, the crown uh, in England was... Um, French. And so, via French, 80% uh, and, and Latin uh, too, 80% of the language was affected. What 80%? The 80% that is most unusual. The 20% of the language, the more everyday language, which is not the, the first that you learn, the easiest that you learn, it is... Uh, all over the place, uh, but think about it, uh, for every word that you have, like hide, uh, which has uh, an Anglo-Saxon origin, you have unsconed, and uh, that is uh, really strange and, uh, and very specific in meaning, or you would have the, the adjective, the occult, Again, very, very specific. You cannot go through life uh, using those words unless you mean it. So, uh, Knight gives us um, an, a very quick review, uh, but very interesting review of um, exp German, Germanic expressions, Celtic expressions, uh, words that come from the Anglo-Saxon, from the French, from the uh, from Latin, and this is uh, page 294. Pay attention to that because, pay very specific attention because that will help you write in better English, in more everyday English, right? And, and, and um, more understandable English. For example, think about it. There's the word rumbus, right? Nobody would really know. And uh, there are autodidactic. You know, you would normally say self-teaching. Uh, so pay attention to that. That will help you greatly in our next unit, which is the unit on um, headlines. Because headlines will always use words of Anglo-Saxon origin. The words with punch, quit, 
um, shock, uh, very short words, all right? So uh, read this. This is usually not tested as such, but it is probably the most important part that may affect your, your future expression in English uh, in English translation. So uh, pay attention to it and uh, enjoy. So now I will go to page Roman uh, 15, which is uh, journalistic writing in the 21st century. That is just a preface. Uh, read it. It's interesting. And then we go to page 19. Okay, pages 19 through 32 will give us, just like Carlos Marin uh, did um, in, in his introduction to the subject, Knight will explain about the mechanics of writing, how we are pushed for time in journalism. And this is something that all translators can relate to because we usually have exactly the same problem when uh, translating. We're always up against deadlines. So consider that. And see how, for example, um, Marine tackles uh, these issues. For example, think about the KISS KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. What does it mean? What, how should we go about the use of jargon? Should we use jargon? Is that part of keeping it simple? Think about it. Um, and then on page 22nd, uh, Knight introduces the topic of the lead. Notice the lead may be spelled uh, L-E-D-E, L-E-D-E, -E, or L-E-A-D. And uh, that is what we call cabeza informativa in Spanish. Cabecera is an old-fashioned term, uh, and you have uh, other forms, and uh, you, you may go to the glossary for that uh, to pay closer attention. I'm getting dark here, excuse me. Just a passing cloud. Now we're, we're, we're perfect. Um, so uh, notice how uh, Knight talks about style, basic uh, guidelines for developing writing skills. Those are key because you will be writing of my translations, still you will be writing journalism. So pay close attention uh, to that. And uh, of course, on page uh, 26, you have a word about the English language. We make reference to that uh, at the end of the, of, the, um, of the book. And then the trap of vocabulary. Again, Pay attention to this. Do the exercises. Exercises are fun. Exercise is not fun. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but but pay attention to this um, and pay close attention to Knight's ideas on language, style, vocabulary. How do they contribute to create the news? All right, so this is all I have for today. I think this is all I have for this unit, thank God. And uh, I'll see you hopefully again next time. Please stay home, stay safe, stay healthy. Have a good day.